Welcome back. Thank you so much for keeping it K24. We do appreciate your company, as I always like to say. We love to hear from you uh, from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. every weekday through our social media platforms. And of course, through that SMS number 21222. You can catch us as at K24 TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My name is Shiko Kaitani, and welcome to our social hour. Now, blood is a valuable resource that is limited and costly. And yes, it is exhaustible. But just what is the state of blood transfusion services in Kenya? And what really needs to be improved? And how can you and I participate in ensuring the availability of this essential medicine? Studies have shown that those who need it most are women and children for re birth related needs, rather, while a good percentage of blood seekers are those with non communicable diseases. And that's why I am joined today by one. Eunice Owino, who joins us to tell us her story as a sickle cell warrior. Welcome to the show. We also do have Joseph Wangendo, who is the director at Blood Link Foundation and definitely at the forefront in the fight to see improved blood transfusion services in this country. Welcome to the show, Joseph. Thank you very much. Last but not least, right next to me, uh, from the Blood Transfusion Unit at Kenyatta National Hospital, is one Dr. Thuranira Kaugiria. Karibu sana. Good to see you all, and thank you for making time to be with us at K24. Uh, let me start off with you, Eunice. Uh, why don't you start by just giving us a little bit about your story and what you have had to endure as a sickle cell warrior? Um, being born with sickle cell, mm -hmm. first, of all, first of all, it's not a death sentence. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, like any other disease. It's just that um, we become more anemic mm -hmm. than any other person, and that's why we need blood more than any other person, right. especially when you have a lot of sickling cells mm -hmm. in your body, you tend to be hospitalized like between two weeks to um, um, a week in hospital wow. where you need blood to be always uh, mm -hmm. added to your system mm -hmm. because of uh, the sickling cells, which makes you become very, very anemic. And yeah. I think the doctor will explain more mm -hmm. on how it ends up being very yeah. low in the body system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, yeah, we always uh, put on a, a lot of blood. Yeah. And that's why we, uh, we always plead to people to always donate blood yeah. because you don't only save my life, but a generation. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, Doc, let me rope you in on that just to build on to, to what Eunice has said so that we can try and understand um, how necessary and you know how delicate um, this needs to be handled. Because when we talk about blood transfusion and how it's saving lives, especially in the cases of non, uh, those non-communicable uh, diseases that we're talking about. Because if you get an accident, we get it. When we hear someone has gone to give birth, we get it, why they would be losing blood. But in such a situation, you know, <coughs> cancer patients, you name it. Thank you, Shiko, and yeah. thank you, K24, for giving us this chance to enlighten the public. Yeah. Dennis, thank you for being a strong warrior. Keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> so sickle cell disease is an inherited condition. Mm -hmm mostly affects the red blood cells of the body. Yeah. The red blood cells of the body are the ones responsible for carrying oxygen in the body. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, in this instance, uh, they, it is inherited. So either the parent has a trait or the yeah. parent has a disease. Yeah. So it's inherited in the children. It is not a curse, as people out there may think. Mm -hmm. It is a disease. And it, is well it can be managed and people live. So normally, what usually happens, normally, mm -hmm. uh, red blood cells have a shape. Yeah. Call it a spherical shape. Mm -hmm. it's, a sh it's a shape of the red yeah. blood cell. So within it is what we call hemoglobin mm -hmm. that binds oxygen and transports it. Yes. Now, <clears throat> what usually happens, these ones are, tend to be deformed red mm. blood cells. So normally a normal red blood cell lives in the body for 120 days. Yeah. But a sickled, sickled, it looks like a sickled. Yeah. If anyone has ever seen how a sickle looks, right. it looks like yeah, a sickle. Like, yeah. yes, uh -huh. Or a half donut. Uh, yes, a half, half donut. donut. Yeah. Very good, yes. yeah. So normally what tends to happen is that that's an, uh, it is detected in the body as an abnormal cell. Mm -hmm. So it is destroyed very fast. Right. So sickled, sickled cell yeah. lasts up to 20 days. Mm -hmm. But normally red blood cells last up to 120 days. Okay. So they tend to keep on having the red blood cells being destroyed right. routinely. Yes. And they are being destroyed, the, red, uh, the hemoglobin level goes down. That's what okay. she was saying. 
and yes. HB goes down, right. she becomes anemic. Okay. So now they tend to come to hospital for frequent transfusions. Mm -hmm. With low hemoglobin, with low blood level, yeah. there is limited supply of oxygen. Okay. And that's where complications start. Okay. Once the complications start, they have to rush to hospital to be yeah. transfused. Okay. Hence the reason we encourage people to be donors, and okay. I think that's something we'll discuss as we yeah. continue, so that we can have yeah. blood, enough blood to help some of our yeah. Okay, so like I had asked before, um, please tell us what other patients uh, you see on a regular basis mm. coming in for transfusion. For transfusion. Yeah. At the Kenyatta National Hospital, I've worked there, especially in the accidents and emergency for mm -hmm. the last uh, four years. Yeah. Their most common patients that require blood are trauma patients, road okay. traffic accident patients. Okay. We receive at least 80 to 100 every day. Wow, that is a Big huge Boda, number. Big Boda, Boda, Matatu, yeah. and what, what. Right. Uh, expectant mothers undergoing through going through pregnancy mm -hmm. delivery post post delivery also require blood okay oncology patients patients with cancers that mm -hmm. need chemo yeah uh, you know some of those cancers their cells are eaten up mm -hmm. so they require blood transfusion wow. children mm -hmm. require that we have people with uh, <coughs> other diseases that require uh, blood. Yeah. So the, the need is there. The need is and there. And the need is there countrywide yeah. from Mombasa to mm -hmm. Kisumu to Kenyatta National Hospital. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, Joseph, let me rope you in at this particular point. And um, we even have that as our question of the day. Do you believe we've got a crisis in this country and why? Uh, thank you very much, Chico, for yeah. having us on the show. Yeah. Um, to your question, do we have a crisis? Yes, we do have a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, I think the institution that is charged with the responsibility of running blood services in the country, yeah. which is under the Ministry of Health, the Kenya National Blood Transfusion Service, mm -hmm. uh, we know has stalled. Yeah. Um, they have uh, been facing financial crisis, especially after the pullout of uh, US government funding yeah. uh, in September of 2019. Uh, prior to that, we were struggling still um, as a country. Uh, we've never been able to meet our uh, needs as a country in mm -hmm. terms of blood requirements mm -hmm. and so uh, that just accelerated the situation uh, yeah. from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. uh, currently I'm informed yeah. that hardly any of the blood centers yeah. is doing what it should be mm -hmm. which chiefly is collecting blood. Okay. Okay. Um, going out to donors, yeah. reaching out to donors and getting them to donate blood right. and without the commodity uh, the, the institution becomes redundant. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's uh, interesting that we're having this discussion uh, because just before the show, uh, Joseph and I were looking at the people daily. On page 8, there is a story there that is talking about how the blood banks in Mombasa have run dry. So, very timely discussion. And that's what we want to ask you this morning. And let's put that question up uh, on your screen uh, so that you can participate. Do we have a blood crisis in Kenya? If you have even had to go through that process of either asking someone to donate blood for a loved one or even for yourself, what was it like? If you can, please share with us at K24 TV on Facebook and Twitter is how you can reach us. We even do have a WhatsApp number, by the way. There you have it on your screen. Go ahead and text us and we'll be able to sample some of your feedback right here on the show. Um, I'm going to ask my director if he can to just uh, slap a graph that we had prepared and at whatever point, um, uh, Bona Director, you can let me know when it's ready. Uh, but listen to this. The Kenya National Blood Transfusion Services was established in 2000 following the terrorist attack on the U.S. Embassy. I didn't even know that. Now, in the recent Ducit complex attacks, which was just last year, uh, KNBTS could not meet the demand for blood for victims and survivors. And the service had to organize an emergency blood drive to meet the demand. Now, let me still get back to you, Joseph, on this. And I want you to explain this graph because um, this is all part of your research. Um, uh, let me ask my director to put that graph up uh, as we just try to understand when we mean demand versus what is available in the market, what are we looking at in terms of those figures? Can we have that graph up? And then um, you can just take us, just walk us through it and what it means. So there you have it. Yeah, so um, WHO recommends that um, countries should be able to uh, at least raise 1% of the population to donate blood every year. Yeah. And what that means, um, as a country, Kenya has a population of 50 uh, million. So we should be collecting about 500,000 uh, blood units every year. Mm -hmm. um, we hardly collect 
um, we collect 150, 170. Yeah. As you can see in the graph, mm -hmm. uh, the blue part is yeah. what we collect. Mm -hmm. um, the orange, is it brown or orange? It's uh, orange. It's uh, orange. Men are colorblind, truly. <laughs> <laughs> the the, yes, the, the orange, orange part yeah. is the deficit we've had. Wow. So over the years, we've never been close. I think we collect about 30 40, at the highest, we probably have collected 40% of our needs, right. which means we've always had a shortfall. But okay. now, uh, if you ask me, that's up to 2017. Yeah. 2018 didn't look too good. Either, uh, yeah. 2019 mm -hmm. and 2020 will look worse. Right. And so, yeah. 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 So you can even see, I mean, even with the stories that are coming in, um, uh, through, of course, different correspondence across the country, you can see the reports are not looking good. But then, um, in your case, Eunice, um, how have transfusions been for you? Um, uh, do you have good and bad experiences or just bad? Um, two, I can say two-edged sword. Yeah. First of all, mm -hmm. is um, it can be good because it will save my life. Right. I'll be out of the crisis. I'll stop being anemic. Mm -hmm. Then bad reason being, mm -hmm. if I'm um, hospitalized like um, maybe like in a month, twice or thrice, my family cannot be donating blood every time. Because as a human being, for women, mm -hmm. you're supposed to donate blood four times a year. Mm -hmm. For men, yeah. no, for women is three times a year. Mm -hmm. For men, it's four times a year. Mm -hmm. They can't, do, they can't be donating for me every month. So you, you heavily rely on volunteers' blood? Yes. Wow. And that's a challenge? That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And my background, I remember I, I was a blood recruiter yeah. some years back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know how it feels to go out there to the public and request people to donate blood and save a life. Yeah. And uh, the aim is actually to target the ages between mm -hmm. 16. Mm -hmm. To, uh, to 23 there. Yeah. You can say that is safe blood. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. from there, then people also have another myth. Yeah. Why do I need to give you my blood? You then decide to do a HIV test or any other test. Mm -hmm. So there's also myths around the blood donation yeah. that not every pa single person is willing to donate. Yeah. Then you can have your core friends mm -hmm. who will always be donating for you, but they can't be donating every time. Right. Right. So at the end of the day, you as a human being, you, you also need to try yeah. and uh, figure out how you'll sort yourself. Okay. Um, have you ever gotten to a point whereby things were actually thick and there was not enough blood for your transfusion? Yeah. During one of your treatments? Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, I was admitted at KNH. Mm -hmm. I needed to be transfused, uh, I think... Yeah, I have a crazy doctor. He had written for me 10 pints, yeah. but I refused. We agreed at least two. Yeah. So getting even one mm -hmm. and being a recruiter, I, I know every single person who works at the National Blood Transfusion Center, yeah. which is like the bank. Yeah. But here comes a case where now the hospital itself is like, as we don't have blood, mm -hmm. you call your people to come and donate blood. Wow. At the end of the day, you still pay for that blood because of uh, the task they'll do mm -hmm. to make sure that the blood is safe, mm -hmm. the blood is uh, able to fit yeah. you, and also it will not give you any other reaction. Right. So you become very desperate. Mm -hmm. So sometimes mm -hmm. uh, as sickle cell warriors, we end up taking, yeah. uh, there's a drug that we always take just to boost our blood. Okay. Because uh, sometimes even just being transfused over and over, yeah. it also damages the organs. It does. Huh? Yeah. Well, you know, when you listen to her story, it, it, it goes to show you we're living in scary times. Because Better. honestly speaking, what if no one does turn up? Yeah. You know, and uh, you, this is an emergency situation. How are we operating now, Doc, when you look at the scene? Uh, honestly, we are not doing well. Yeah. We are doing really badly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, we have resorted to means, other means of survival. Right. And means of survival is encouraging. You know, we have people already recruited as donors. Right. We need to recruit more people who are donors. Mm -hmm. We have been really reliant on school-going children. Yeah. Mm -hmm to be the donors. We have been really reliant on the few repeated donors. Yeah. Strategies have changed. Individual hospitals are using their own strategies. At the Kenyatta National Hospital, especially now, we are really encouraging people to be donors. Uh -huh. We are doing a lot of healthcare awareness yeah. to convince people to be donors. Mm -hmm. Anyone will, might need blood at any moment. Right. You might be walking around and you're knocked down by a car. You bleed. You yes. need transfusion. You need blood to go to theater. Mm -hmm. Our mothers, our wives will become expectant, will need to go to, uh, 
to go to theater or okay. need transfusion. Mm -hmm. Warriors like you, Nisia, will need blood. So, number one, as a country, we have failed because we need to instill the culture of donation amongst ourselves. Right. I am a regular donor. Mm -hmm. I am due for donation in February, so yeah. I'll be donating at an event that you're organizing mm -hmm. with Joe here and mm -hmm. several other people. And uh, we are trying to get blood yeah. and convince Kenyans to build a culture. You have seen the WHO estimate. Yeah. If 1% of the 50 million of us mm -hmm. became regular donors, mm -hmm. okay. we just decided I'll become a regular donor. At, at the end of four months, if I'm a lady, at the yeah. end of 90 days, if I'm a man, I go and donate. Okay. That blood helps people that you have never met. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way you can share your life yeah. with the rest of the people. Okay. That's the ultimate sacrifice. That you can it's unfortunate that it has to be charged, mm -hmm. and the charges also vary. Yeah. Uh, there are the standard charges <coughs> for screening of the blood. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be given safe blood. Okay. So at the point that the blood is being donated, it is unscreened. Mm -hmm. You don't know what this guy has. Right. You have to do the standard HIV test. Yeah, so like it, it, I mean, test. it takes a team. <laughs> yes, it yeah. takes a team. It to has to be done. Yeah. So apart from you do your part, mm -hmm. come donate blood. Mm -hmm. That is your part. Okay. The rest of it will do it as uh, clinician, scientist. Yeah. And right. That. Thank you. Okay, uh, Joseph, uh, even just listening to the way we are operating, uh, and now he's even mentioned that hospitals or different centers are literally, you know, running their own show. Everybody has their own uh, more or less framework that they are working with. Um, in your opinion, is that really now the way to go? Because if you think about uh, the National Blood Transfusion Services almost literally being non-existent, what is the way forward? I think um, standard mm. requirement, you know, even by WHO requirement, yeah. um, is that a country should have a national blood service. Yeah. And in fact, we had, a, I think, a 2004 policy that actually recommended the, the institution be created. And uh, fortunate for Kenya, this institution we call KNBTS yeah. was gifted to us by the US government, in a way, yeah. by default. Um, it came about to being following the 1998 US embassy attack. Yeah. And so the U.S. government, through USAID, helped us put up the blood centers that mm -hmm. we know, the blood banks. Mm -hmm. And after that, because the, uh, you know, the, the HIV pandemic, what happened is we continued receiving funding. Um, but the institution was never anchored in law. So we were gifted an institution, we, you know, the brick and mortar, the staff who are yeah. well-trained, um, professionals, you know, equipment. Um, but unfortunately, after the funding has ended, we yeah. are not able to sustain it. Right. What we need to do is go back and look at how do we finance this institution. Mm. And that's why we're calling for legislation of the institution, because it wasn't anchored in law. Right. Um, but more importantly is, um, I think Dr. Tari has said that KNH is one of the institutions that fortunately have um, mm -hmm. uh, pro put together internal structures yeah. to to make sure that they, you know, they can mm -hmm. sustain themselves. And of, of course, being the biggest uh, use of blood in this country, right. that's very critical. Okay. But there are others that are not able. And then we cannot have a, a fra fragmented mm -hmm. um, system because you can imagine in terms of quality, yeah. um, every other hospital would have different qualities in terms of, like you mentioned, screening of uh, diseases like HIV right. or he hepatitis. Yeah. We need to be sure that all blood is screened to a certain standard. Mm -hmm. Can BTS has gone through a an accreditation process which yeah. is globally, you mm -hmm. know, they, are, they, 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 they have the best. Oh, yeah. um, unfortunately, if you look at hospitals in Nairobi, even like Mama Lucy mm -hmm. or Bagathi Hospital or Pumwani, yeah. they don't have the capacity that Kenyatta has. Right. And so what happens is when a patient at Mama Lucy today needs blood, mm -hmm. They, they're called, their relatives are called, but they cannot donate blood at Mama Lucy. Right, they so will still have to go back. They'll go to Kenyatta, uh, to Ken BTS. Yes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there again, there's a crisis, this, so yeah. they are most likely sent to Kenyatta or yeah. even now I hear you're told to buy your own soda, your own, oh, geez. the questionnaire that you fill out, you're told to go and photocopy. Yeah. That's how bad it's become. And, and, and you know, one of the questions uh, that has now popped up uh, is when you've mentioned that the U.S. government was actually funding this, why did they pull out? Is it because of mismanagement? What was going on? No, it was planned, actually, mm. because, um, you know, it was uh, under what is called PEFA funding yeah. um, to support HIV initiatives, uh, especially blood safety. Uh, that was coming, but it was planned. It the was government planned. knew it was coming to an end. Yeah. I think the gradual withdrawal of funding started in 2014, mm -hmm. and uh, it came to an end. So the government was aware, uh, uh -oh. but it's lack of preparedness. Lack of preparedness, yeah. okay. 
Uh, we want to throw that question to you today. Even after everything you have had, what is, uh, you know, your take on our discussion today? As we talk, of course, about blood donation awareness and blood transfusion and even the crisis that we have in this country. Do you believe that we have that crisis? Uh, at K24 TV on Instagram and, of course, Facebook and Twitter is how you can reach us. That WhatsApp line is active. So go ahead and send in your contribution to the show. We'll be sure to actually sample some of those text messages as they stream in and by the way if you want to call uh, the numbers will be at the bottom of your screen would love to hear your voice and even some of your experiences on the ground uh, we are going to be taking a short break in just a moment uh, but even before we do I had asked this question who are we going to blame in this scenario because we've got uh, Kenya National Blood Transfusion Services you know, you could also just be working where you work, but it is not you. It is the person above you. So is it them who we should be pointing a finger at, or is it MOH, the Ministry of Health? Uh, from a little experience in the yeah. last 10 years in the public health sector, we yeah. have a habit of assigning blame to this specific person Yes. <laughs> without providing solutions. Yes. Number one, I'll, we will take blame as all of us and yeah. take blame as Kenyans. Mm. Number one, we agreed to be dependent mm. on a foreign government to aid our problems. Right. And we continued, we continued, we forgot that we are supposed to plan mm -hmm. for the same service that all of us will want to benefit from. Right. Number two, we over relied and we accepted that the issue of blood, there are so many players in it. I won't yeah. call them cartels, but there are so many players in it with a lot of interest in it. Mm -hmm. Number three, as ourselves, we have not adopted the culture as Kenyans of being donors. Right. Now, moving forward, providing solution. <clears throat> moving forward, there are several things that are in the pipeline, as yeah. Joe will add. There is a Kenya National Blood Transfusion and Organ Transplant Bill mm -hmm. that is at the Parliamentary Committee of Health. Right that proposes, among other things, this institution being an independent institution, right. fully funded mm -hmm. by the government for all these other processes. Mm -hmm. I would encourage the politicians, the parliamentarians, to fast track it to become law and the operationalization of it. Right. I'm looking at when they come from recess, we are in the BBI era. Yeah, <laughs> I like that we're in the BBI era. Uh, all things BBI. Yes, we are, yes. In, we are in the, we're in this phase of uh, uh -huh. vetting of cabinet secretaries. Mm -hmm. So I really hope we should prioritize some of these things that we have and yeah. should be fast tracked to be sorted out. Right. Number two is uh, <clears throat> as a nation, as a ministry, as uh, the government, I would encourage from the top, mm -hmm. if our president would be, would be a blood donation champion, yeah. our first lady would be the blood donation champion. Mm -hmm. It will go far. Countries that have made it like Rwanda yeah. Yeah. have routine blood mm -hmm. donation exercises mm -hmm. that are anchored mm -hmm. in the it's like a culture yeah we know that on the 14th of february valentine's day right we shall be donating blood to help our wow. people you get yeah so it systems, starts with us it starts with us with, systems yeah. that are working like south africa south mm -hmm. africa has a very good blood donation and uh, management system right we need to we need to be accountable as as, as kenyans let's yeah. not blame we can blame the u.s government for for pulling out. For pulling out. <laughs> you can blame the ministry for poor policy and everything. Yes. But at the end of it all, we need all of us to play our yeah. role. Okay. To sort out. Thank you. And by the way, uh, you probably are wondering, okay, Shiko, why didn't you actually have someone from the Kenya National Blood Transfusion Services here with us? We really did try. Unfortunately, uh, they were unavailable, or should I say they just did not pick up? <laughs> because I don't know if the numbers are not working. Not I mean, even call look. As dialed. See, Please that is the number, number on the website. So, uh, yes, <laughs> let's talk to Ahmed, uh, who is in Garissa. Good morning, Ahmed. Ahmed, good morning. Good, Can you hear me? Good morning, Seiko. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm very fine. Yes. Do you believe we've got a crisis in our country? Uh, yes. Uh, today, you have brought a very important topic on the TV. Yeah. Yes, we have uh, a blood crisis in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say this. Now that we have a crisis and the doctors are telling us we need to cultivate a culture of uh, urging Kenyans to right. donate their blood for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that I, in my opinion, it would want. Okay. Because Kenyans don't believe what is called free donation. Yeah. And uh, you know, blood is an important, very crucial uh, commodity in our blood, in our body. You mm -hmm. cannot work and function without blood. Yeah. So we have seen politicians carrying crowds to Bokongo Stadium for BBI, Siju Nini, Wanapatiana Pesa, Badala ya kufanya hayo mambo, yeah. hizi hospitali wa organize uh, sensitization program, watu wa itwe, wa donate, alafu wapatiwe hata kama ni miatano, miatano, miambili, miambili, na tupate damu. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Lakini tukingoja wa Kenya, wakuja, watupatie blood for free. Mm. Hakuna mkenya ambaye anajitolea na kupatiana kitu ampacho kina itwa free. Hakuna free. All right, Salasa Ahmed, well said, Asanti Sana for that. Um, uh, I'm going to comment on what Ahmed had to, had to say, um, but let me let me take Mwangi uh, before I do. Uh, is Mwangi still there? Good morning, Mwangi. Hello, Mwangi. Okay. Uh, looks like we've lost Mwangi, but uh, remember, we are still looking out for your feedback through WhatsApp. Uh, let's take a look at this text message that has come in from Tim from Kisi, who says, Kindly ask the doctor to demystify the myth slash fact that why is my blood sold when I donate it for free? Can't the government take care of the processing costs? Very good question um, as far as donating is concerned. Um, okay, Dr. answer that first. Um, I'll start with uh, what uh, Hamid said. Mm -hmm. Internationally, yeah. the issue of blood donation has been discussed. Mm -hmm. And the issues of people paying for it, having donors on a payroll to do that has been discussed. Yeah. Blood is a, it's a sensitive topic, mm -hmm. but internationally what is recommended is that blood donation should be voluntary. Yeah. No amount of pressure or trying to discuss it any other way can make people give, be paid to mm. do it. We are currently operating with the few donors that we have and they have been doing it voluntarily. The little thing that you're given, like a soda, and what was just to rejuvenate you, give you some energy boost before you leave. Now, and to the issue of blood being charged, once blood has been donated, it is donated for free. But that blood has to be screened. We have standard lab procedures and tests that have to be done for screening it. You will be shocked that when the US government was funding us, mm -hmm. they were funding to the last coin of screening. So NBTS used to give blood ready for transfusion. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, there's something commonly we, we call cross-matching, blood grouping, and antibody testing. Yeah. Even once that blood has been screened, is free from all these common diseases, HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, that blood can't be given directly. Mm -hmm. We have to get your, un your sample mm -hmm. and a small sample from this blood, get to know your blood group and the blood group of this blood, cross-match them to confirm that these two red blood cells, mm -hmm. the red blood cell from the donor and the red blood cell from Shiko, yeah. will not cross-react. Okay. And also make sure you rule out any antibodies mm -hmm. that might cross-react so that you are given safe blood. That one has a cost implication on it. But the good thing is that in government institutions, most of it is really subsidized by the yeah. government. Mm. So the cost tends to be a little bit very low, up to 1,500, 2,000, to do all, all that. Yeah. Don't forget there's manpower involved that will be used. There's mm -hmm. power involved. There's storage of the blood. So it's just like a, it's a subsidized cost to make this blood be safe for you, mm -hmm. even though it has been given for free. Yeah. Now, blood starts being expensive when it is not whole blood you're being given. It's blood constituents or components, components that are being right. given. Okay. There are people who require platelets only. Yeah. There are people who need plasma only. Mm -hmm. There are people who need clotting factors only. This mm -hmm. one has a long process of, okay. of uh, processing them and yeah. preparing them uh, before they are ready to be given. Okay. So if it's all blood, so it's just a cost. Yeah. The, it's the processes of making this blood safe and giving you. Okay. Yes. Okay. <coughs> all right. So uh, mm -hmm. Shiko, um, yes. Um, the, the bill that we're talking about yes. has uh, factored in issues of financing. Mm -hmm. For example, we know it costs about 7,000, you know, end to end, mm -hmm. um, vein to vein, the yeah. cost of blood, blood you know, yeah. the processing. And what we've done, and it's not going to be new in Kenya, yes. I, I mean to Kenya, to Kenya. Uh, because countries like Zimbabwe mm -hmm. have it. You know, you'd be surprised like countries like Zimbabwe, which we think are 
failed. really doing badly yeah. have a very effective blood system. Blood in fact, system. one of the best in the mm -hmm. continent. Mm -hmm. um, where government factors in the financing of that cost. Okay. So what we've done with the draft bill that's in parliament is we've factored in that cost. Oh, okay. Hopefully if that goes through, then we will be able to... Um, Get financing for it. So that the patient doesn't have to bear the... The cost okay. Of the cost yes. of it, okay. Uh, Thank yeah. you for explaining that. Uh, let's take a short break and then get back. And on the other side, we'll continue to actually talk a little bit more about uh, what we understand as blood transfusion and, of course, uh, the donation process. Uh, give us your thoughts as we ask that question. Do we have a blood crisis in this country at K24 TV? Remember, is how you can reach us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you wish to WhatsApp us, go ahead. We'll be looking out for your feedback. And if you wish to call, we'd love to hear your voice. This morning, keep it K24. There's more to come.